I found the hat. Right, uh, drugs make you stupid. But that's kind of the point, because being stupid can be fun. And there's many different flavors of stupidity. Uh, there's not understanding your surroundings. There's not understanding your limitations. There's not understand, understanding sexual boundaries or language or gravity or space or time or space-time. Or, or there's not understanding how dreadful your music is or how much your life sucks. For every critical faculty, there is a drug that can drain it right out. Um, but that sort of has the effect of heightening your other senses. You know, it's like they're enlarging to fill the holes. Every drug uh, in every different circumstance has a unique pattern on your stupidity index grid. You get to see what the world is like through a drastically rewired brain. It can go horribly, horribly wrong, or it can go indescribably well. But the amazing thing is it's temporary. Once it's over, no matter how screwed up the wiring is, it just snaps right back to normal afterwards, for the most part. There's probably a little bit of sediment left over at the end, but the point is you get to see the wiring under the board. You get to tinker with it. It's like a cheat code for a game, you know, it's like a custom hack. It doesn't affect the game permanently, it just lets you see more of it. It gives you access to the game's full potential. But of course there are um, hacks that do affect the game permanently. Programs that attack the hardware. Viruses, you might call them. Malicious codes that all sail calmly into your enclave on the great Trojan horse called faith. Mm, we're not talking chemicals anymore. Chemicals excite your software, but if you, if you want to get into the hardware, you really need to resort to metaphysical surgery. You know how it works. It works by the relentless repetition of a, of a thought or idea, sort of painting it into your experience until it seems like an indisposable part of nature. You know how a lot of, uh, a lot of, sort of Eastern martial arts things basically involves smacking your head against something a thousand times a day <laughs> until everything but your pineal brand goes completely numb and then you become a Jedi or something but, and, and Western religion is a lot like that but with ideas instead of planks of wood yeah. <laughs> nuns do have their sort of knuckle wrapping rulers and, and, and priests have their well we'll move on um, faith Faith, the idea that there, that there is virtue in believing without evidence, faith um, is, is like a, a hollow tube that's been uh, tapered to a very sharp funnel. Once you've got that well and truly hammered into your mind, you can stick anything else you like in there about auras and chakras and star signs and ghosts and demons and angels and gods. You can fiddle with the stupidity index grid, just like you can with drugs, or at least the meta-surgeon in question can. And again, every different religion and every different spiritual worldview has uh, a unique uh, impact on the grid. The difference is the damage is permanent. You haven't gone in and given it a little jolt from the inside. You've, you've drilled in from the outside and chipped away at the mechanism, you see? True. You, you can see the world through the eyes of a different animal, maybe even a happier animal, but you'll never be able to come back to the wonderfully complex, dynamically beautiful experience of being a human, warts and all. Blaise Pascal postulated, as he often does, that man uh, was in some way born with a, with, a, with a God-shaped hole. I say no, sir. Man was born with no such thing. What you are looking at, sir, is an exit wound from having God pushed through us. And this is usually evidence of a struggle. Now, needless to say, I will fight to the death your right to, to do as you wish with your own body and your own mind. It is, to all ends and means, thine to destroy. I will not support your decision to harm the minds and bodies of those around you, but that's another argument altogether. What I'm concerned with, what my point here is uh, it concerns the absurd hypocrisy regarding societies and indeed the government's position on brain damage. Namely, it spends billions a year and imprisons countless thousands of innocent people 
in order to try and prevent any possibility of temporary brain damage, while it subsidizes institutions who systematically inflict the permanent kind. It's this kind of mind-boggling backwardness that makes me convinced that we really are in the Matrix, and they're just trying out something wacky on us for fun. It's, it's important to have an open mind. But I look at it like this. Having a mind is like leaving a dog in a car on a hot day. If you don't crack the window open from time to time, the dog could very well get baked alive. But if you leave the window wide open, you could very well come back and find the dog's jumped out the car, buggered off altogether, and the car's been stolen.